The Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs The Testament of Reuben, the firstborn son of Yaakov The copy of the Testament of Reuben, even the commandments which he gave his sons before he died in the hundred and twenty-fifth year of his life, two years after the death of Yosef his brother, when Reuben fell ill, his sons and his son's sons were gathered together to visit him. And he said to them, My children, behold, I am dying, and go the way of my fathers. And seeing there Yehuda and Gad and Asher, his brethren, he said to them, Raise me up, that I may tell my brethren and to my children what things I have hidden in my heart. For behold, now at length I am passing away. And he arose and kissed them and said unto them, Hear, my brethren, and do you, my children, give ear to Reuben, your father, and the commands which I give unto you. And behold, I call the witness against you this day, the Elohim of heaven, that you walk not in the sins of youth and fornication, wherein I was poured out and defiled the bed of my father Yaakov. And I tell you that he smote me with a sore plague in my loins for seven months. And had not my father Yaakov prayed for me to Yahuwah, Yahuwah would have destroyed me. For I was thirty years old when I wrought the evil thing before Yahuwah, and for seven months I was sick unto death. And after this I repented with set purpose of my soul for seven years before Yahuwah. And wine and strong drink I drank not, and flesh entered not into my mouth. And I eat no pleasant food, but I mourned over my sins, for it was great, such as had not been in Yasharel. And now hear me, my children, what things I saw concerning the seven Ruachot, spirits of deceit. When I repented, seven Ruachot, therefore, are appointed against man. And they are the leaders in the works of youth. And seven other Ruachoth are given to him at his creation, that through them should be done every work of man. The first is the Ruach of life, with which the constitution of man is created. The second is the sense of sight, with which arises desire. The third is the sense of hearing, with which comes teaching. The fourth is the sense of smell, with which tastes are given to draw air and breathe. The fifth is the power of speech, with which comes knowledge. The sixth is the sense of taste, with which comes the eating of meats and drinks, and by it strength is produced, for in food is the foundation of strength. The seventh is the power of procreation and sexual intercourse with which through love of pleasure sins enter in. Wherefore, it is the last in order of creation, and the first in that of youth, because it is filled with ignorance, and leaves the youth as a blind man to a pit, and as a beast to a precipice. Besides, all, th all these there is an eighth ruach of sleep, with which is brought about the trance of nature and the image of death. With these Ruach Oath are mingled the Ruach Oath of Error. First, the Ruach Oath, Ruach of Fornication, is seated in the nature and in the senses. The second, the Ruach of Insatiableness in the belly. The third, the Ruach of Fighting in the liver and gall. The fourth is the Ruach of Obsequescence, obsequence and chican Chicanery that through officious attention one may be fair in seeming. The fifth is the Ruach of Pride, that one may be boastful and arrogant. The sixth is the Ruach of Lying, and perdition and jealousy to practice deceits and concealments from kindred and friends. The seventh is the Ruach of Injustice, with which is thefts and acts of rapacity, that a man may fulfill the desire of his heart. For injustice works together with the other Ruach Oath by the taking of gifts. And with all these the Ruach of Sleep is joined, which is that of error and fantasy. And so perishes every young man, darkening his mind from the truth and not understanding the Torah of Elohim, nor obeying the admonitions of his fathers, as befell me also in my youth. 
And now, my children, love the truth, and it will preserve you. Hear the words of Reuben, your father. Pay no heed to the face of a woman, nor associate with another man's woman, nor meddle with affairs of womankind. For I had not seen Bilhah bathing in a covered place. I had not fallen into this great iniquity. For my mind, taking in the thought of the woman's nakedness, suffered me not to sleep until I had wrought the abominable thing. For while Yaakov your father had gone to Yitzhak his father, when we were in Eder, near to Ephrathah, and Beth Lechem, Bilhah became drunk and was asleep uncovered in her chamber. Having therefore gone in and beheld her nakedness, I wrought the impiety without her perceiving it, and leaving her sleeping, I departed. And straightway an angel of Elohim revealed to my father concerning my impiety, and he came and mourned over me and touched her no more. Pay no heed, therefore, my children, to the beauty of women, nor set your mind on their affairs, but walk in singleness of heart of Yahuwah, and expend labor on good works, and on study, and on your flocks, until Yahuwah give you a woman, whom he will, that you suffer not as I did, for until my father's death I had not boldness to look in his face, or to speak to any of my brethren because of the reproach. Even until now my conscience causes me anguish on account of my impiety, and yet my father comforted me much and prayed for me unto Yahuwah, that the anger of Yahuwah might pass from me even as Yahuwah showed. And from then until now I have been on my guard and sinned not. Therefore, my children, I say unto you, observe all things whatsoever I command you, and you shall not sin. For a pit unto the soul is the sin of fornication, separating it from Elohim, and bringing it near to idols, because it deceives the mind and understanding, and leads young men into Sheol before their time. For many has fornication destroyed, because though a man be old or noble, or rich or poor, he brings reproach upon himself with the sons of men, and derision with Baal. For you heard regarding Yosef, how he guarded himself from a woman, and purged his thoughts from all fornication, and found favor in the sight of Elohim and men. For the Mitzrith woman did many things unto him, and summoned magicians, and offered him love potions. But the purpose of his soul admitted no evil desire. Therefore the Elohim of your fathers delivered him from every evil and hidden death. For if fornication overcomes not your mind, neither can Baal overcome you. For evil are women, my children, and since they have no power or strength over man, they use wiles by outward attractions that they may draw him to themselves, and whom they cannot bewitch by outward attractions, him they overcome by craft. For mo moreover concerning them, the angel of Yahuwah told me and taught me that women are overcome by the ruach of fornication more than men, and in their heart they plot against men, and by means of their adornment they deceive first their minds, and by the glance of the eye instill the poison, and then through the accomplishment act, they take them captive. For a woman cannot force a man openly, but by a harlot's bearing she beguiles him. Flee therefore fornication, my children, and command your women and your daughters that they adorn not their heads and faces to deceive the mind, because every woman who uses these wiles has been reserved for eternal punishment. For thus they allure the watchers who were before the flood. For as these continually beheld them, they lusted after them and they conceived the act in their mind. For they changed themselves into the shape of men, and appeared to them when they were with their men. And the women lusting in their minds after their forms gave birth to Nephilim. For the watchers appeared to them as reaching even unto heaven. Beware therefore of fornication, and if you wish to be pure in mind, guard your senses from every woman. And command the women likewise not to associate with men, that they also may be pure in mind. For constant meetings, even though the wicked deed not be wrought, are to them an irremediable disease, and to us the destruction of Baal, and an eternal reproach. For in fornication there is neither understanding nor righteousness, 
and all jealousy dwells in and lust thereof. Therefore, then, I say unto you, you will be jealous against the sons of Levi, and will seek to be exalted over them. But you shall not be able, for Elohim will avenge them, and you shall die by an evil death. For to Levi Elohim gave the sovereignty unto Yehuda with him, and to me also, and to Dan, and to Yosef, that we should be for rulers. Therefore I command to hearken to Levi, because he shall know the Torah of Yahuwah, and shall give ordinances for judgment, and shall sacrifice for all Yasharel until the consummation of the times, as the anointed high priest of whom Yahuwah spoke. I adjure you by the Elohim of heaven to do truth each one unto his neighbor, and to entertain love each one for his brother, and draw near to Levi in humbleness of heart, that you may receive a blessing from his mouth. For he shall bless Yasharel and Yahuda, because him has Yahuwah chosen to be king over all the nation, and bow down before his seed, for on our behalf it will die in wars visible and invisible, and will be among you an eternal king. And Reuben died, having given these commands to his sons, and they placed him in a coffin until they carried him up from Mitzrayim, and buried him in Chevron, in the cave where his father was.